Alright, what's going on guys? As I'm sure everyone is well aware by now, Elden Ring DLC was officially confirmed and we were given a sneak peek into the concept art of that DLC which is now called Shadow of the Erd Tree. Now the only information we currently have about this DLC is this one promotional image. But if you know anything about FromSoft fans, you know that's enough to keep us occupied for quite a while. Because you better believe we're going to analyze every single pixel of this image. And that's about what I want to do today. We're going to be discussing all of the story possibilities possibilities of this DLC based on this image. Because now that this image has had time to marinate in our minds, there actually is quite a bit that's been discovered. But as we get into all that today, you guys know we're chasing down 100k subs here on the channel. So if you're excited about this DLC and want to see more content surrounding it, do me a favor and hit the subscribe button. It's a win-win for both of us. In the last video, I gave my initial thoughts on the image and my first assumptions at what I thought we were looking at, and here's the basic rundown of that. The first conclusion we made is that the character in the foreground is Mikola riding on the back of Torrent. The second was that the tree that we see in the background here is actually two trees. What we're looking at is the Erd tree being constricted by another, and leaking a sort of golden liquid. Now beyond that, we couldn't really draw any conclusive comparisons, but my goal for today is to take the little things that we can find in this image and use them to form connections to what we already know. So let's start at the beginning with Mikola. Firstly, we still have a lot of people out there who don't think that we're looking at Mikola here. So let me give you a little bit of evidence. As we mentioned in the last video, the hair on this character is identical to Mikola's hair in the intro cinematic. It's the same length and all of the braids are exactly the same. Although in the DLC image, it is blown back a little bit. Now, the most prominent feature here is the braid going around his head, which is the signature motif of the Halig Tree soldiers. Now, one counterpoint of evidence here was that they said this character looked too much like a female to be Mikola. But the thing is, Mikola's curse was that he would forever remain a child. And there is a segment in the lore that describes a character confusing Mikola for a girl. His character is kind of like Griffith in Berserk, where he is male but has this reverent beauty about him, which is described in items such as the Bewitching Branch. Now, another counterpoint to this being Mikola is that he He's riding Torrent's side saddle, which is a posture used by women. But again, this may be on character for Mikola, given that this riding style is also used by the Albanaric Archers, characters also tied to Mikola and the Halig Tree. Now, the other major candidate of who this character might be is a young Queen Merica. However, I just simply don't think that's the case. Every single depiction we have of Queen Merica in the game shows her with a long braid on the right side and short hair on the left. While she does have that main braid going around her head like Mikola does, and similar armbands. I feel like if they were trying to depict someone other than Mikola, they wouldn't make it a perfect one-to-one. -one. And the reason I'm so dead set on this being Mikola is because it makes perfect sense in context of everything else in this image as we're going to talk about. But now let's shift gears for a second and talk about Torrent. We are also working off an assumption that the mount we're seeing here is Torrent, and not another of his species. Now, while that may seem weird, it might actually make more sense that this is Torrent and not another one, for a couple reasons. First and foremost, we know that we are not the first person to own Torrent, and that whoever was Torrent's former master had some form of acquaintanceship with Ronnie. Now, given that Mikola and Ronnie are half-siblings, that would make a degree of sense. To further elaborate on this idea, there's an odd abundance of Mikola's lilies around Caria Manor, specifically in the graveyard. And we know that Torrent is a specter, another word for a ghost, so this is wild speculation, but the idea of Torrent being Mikola's steed before his death might also have a degree of sense to it. The location would explain how Ronnie knew Torrent, and why we find a shade of Loretta, a knight of the Halig Tree, here as well. This is a rabbit hole we could go down all day, but it does show a definite connection between Ronnie, Mikola, and Torrent. There's also the specter steed whistle which is used to call torrent and is said to be made of an intricate gold work and of course a character we know who works with gold is Mikola. now while that may be a bit of a reach people have theorized ever since the game came out that torrent spectral steed whistle may be made of Mikola's unalloyed gold now while i'm not going to spend the entire video going into why that may be the case just keep in mind that it's not out of the realm of possibility at all now it does beg the question of how would Mikola have torrent if we're going to need torrent in the dlc and we'll address that in a later point so for now, keep in mind that that's not a concern. But now we have the context and evidence of who our subject of the DLC is, let's take a look at the most evocative part of this DLC image. The trees seen here tell a lot. We can see the Erd tree leaning to the left being constricted by another tree and leaking this golden liquid. Now we definitely know that these are two different trees. As you can see based on the highlighted parts here, they are not the same. So what are these two trees? As we mentioned, the one being constricted is the Erd tree, although it looks very different from its in-game counterpart. That's because 
because it's missing its outer layer. I went into detail on this in the mushroom video, but the Erd tree has two layers. The outer layer is that pellicid gold that we always see shining brightly over the lands between, but then there is also a regular tree of wood beneath it. We can see this on the entrance to the Erd tree in Lane Dell, but also up in the branches we can see that the old wooden tree extends all the way up to the top, and that the gold is still in the process of growing over it. This image is definitely trying to communicate that whatever tree this is strangling the Erd tree is what caused it to lose the gold. So we have to ask, what is this tree that's coiling around? My first thought, as we mentioned in the last video, was the Halig tree, and I still do believe that's the case, but there is a bit of a condition here. I saw this great video by Dark comparing the Halig tree to what we see in the image of the DLC announcement, and right off the bat we can notice a lot of similarities. Firstly, that the Halig tree does have that same coiling growth, and smaller branches growing from all parts of the tree, even from the base of the stump. They very much look like the same species of tree. Now, when superimposed over the standard Erd tree, it doesn't look very convincing. But there's another observation I want to point out. If we zoom in on the particles falling from the constricting tree, they look pretty familiar. It could be a coincidence, but they look very similar to the ones seen on the death root icon, which, oddly enough, depicts a seed producing roots and a tree growing from the top. Now, as we're all very much aware, death root is infecting the Erd tree in the present game, stemming from the soulless corpse of Godwin. And if there is anything that could kill the Erd tree, it's probably death root. So my initial thoughts when looking at this tree is that we're looking at a death root version of the Haley tree. And while that may sound kind of ridiculous at first, let me give a few more connections to the Haley tree here. Some interesting observations can be made in the prayer room of the Haley tree, with lots of iconography that still has yet to be deciphered. However, two primary things stand out to me. Number one, the candlelight posts seem to have a motif of a vine wrapping around a tree. It's not an entirely uncommon design, but in the context of this image, I can't help but draw some similarities. But also in this room, within the urns by the altar, we can find a similar wheat. But what's pretty strange is that this wheat is growing all over the Halig tree. And once again, in context of the image with an abundance of wheat, it does seem to be a little bit more than a coincidence. But now that we have ample connections to Mikola, the Halig Tree, and Deathroot, let's investigate a part of the lore that I think may serve as a major point in the DLC. One location that might tie all of this together is Castle Soul, a point in the story that describes a plot to cause an eclipse and revive all the soulless demigods. And our story begins at a part of the castle known as the Church of the Eclipse. And within this church, we can find one of the legendary armaments known as the Eclipse Shotel. And it has a description that reads, Storied sword and treasure of Castle Soul that depicts an eclipsed sun drained of color, one of the legendary armaments. In Seoul, the sight of an eclipse inspires a dreadful awe, preventing an onlooker from averting its gaze. And the ghost in the area tells us, O oh great sun, frigid sun of Seoul, surrender yourself to the eclipse, grant life to the soulless bones. There is also one other ghost in the area who gives a better depiction of what's going on here. In his dialogue says, Lord Mikola, forgive me. The sun has not been swallowed. Our prayers were lacking. Your comrade remains soulless. I will never set my eyes upon it now, your divine halig tree. But all of this leaves one very interesting question. Who is Mikola's comrade? Throughout the lands between, we can find the walking mausoleums who carry the bodies of these soulless demigods. And they're guarded by the mausoleum knights, whose shields bear the eclipse iconography, but there are many of these soulless demigods, and not one that's individually recognized. So the most likely candidate here for Mikola's comrade is Godwin, who was the first soulless demigod. Although there is no definite evidence to prove that Godwin was the target of this resurrection, I do think it's fair to say that he is the most qualified candidate. Now there are a few wild speculative points that I want to also touch on real quick. Firstly, let's take a look at these coffins here. They seem to resemble the ones that can transport us in the underground areas, and not the standard coffins that we can find above ground, which again is a loose connection to Godwin considering we take one of these to deep root depths. Another point of interest that I want to investigate a little bit are these ruins. It has been confirmed that there are no matching ruins to this in the entire game. These are a new design. However, I was able to find something that's fairly close. In my opinion, the front of the Queen's bedchamber matches it the most, but we have to do a little bit of reconstruction. If we take out the Erd tree relief and smush everything back together, then we have the most similar pattern. Now, I'm by no means saying that these are the same. All I'm suggesting here is that out of all the ruins in Elden Ring, this one seems to share 
share the same design philosophy. We have six of the window arch openings, with the triangular top of the facade, a circle in its center, two vertical reliefs of a double helix pattern, and then what would have been two spike towers on each side. Now again, I'm not saying they're the same at all, they're obviously not, but considering that we're dealing with two potential demigods here, my only suggestion is that a theme of royalty can be implied. Now the other main takeaway from this image is the abundant amount of ghost graves of all different kinds. The standing circular grave marker that we can see here is actually new like the ruins, not currently found in the game, but we can find all of the other ones. These mass grave sites are located all over the lands between, home to the reanimated corpses of those who live in death. These undead were created by the spreading plague of Deathroot, once again giving us a definite connection to Godwin and Deathroot. But why exactly are they spirit graves and how can we connect this to Mikola? Let's go back to the candle tree post that we can find in the prayer room of the Halig tree. Also across the land we can find spirit versions of these, where ghosts guide us to catacombs and dungeons. Once again giving us a connection between the Halig tree, those who live in death, and spirits. But it goes even deeper. Within the files of the game is a cut twin blade called the Abundance and Decay Twin Blade. And it has a description that reads, Twin Blade symbolizing twins Mikola and Melania. Mikola and his sister were born from an inseparable fate. The blades contain the runes of both abundance and decay. But what's interesting about this is that supposedly the twin blade would do bonus damage to those who live in death, giving us yet another connection. Now once again on the wild speculation side, I couldn't help but notice something unique about the O in Shadow of the Erd Tree. It's very different than the rest of the font. It almost looks like two trees wrapping around in a sort of Ouroboros pattern. And I definitely do think that it's symbolic of the two trees we can see in the image, but I couldn't help notice a stark similarity between the inner ring of the Mending Rune of Death. If we remove the outer offshoots and rotate it, there is definitely a similarity there. And considering all the connections between Mikola, Godwin, and those who live in death, I don't think it's that far-fetched. After all, Inia does call Destin Death the Forbidden Shadow. The one final point I want to talk about before we wrap all this up is the Helfen. Details of this come from the Helfen Steeple, which has a description that reads, Great sword patterned after the black steeple of the Helfen, the lamp wood which guides the dead of the spirit world. The lamp light is similar to grace in appearance, only it is said that it can only be seen by those who met their death in battle. So to put all of this under one big umbrella, I believe what we're going to be doing in the DLC is going into this spirit world by way of Mikola's dream. Without going down another rabbit hole, Mikola is fairly known to be a character in the lore known as Saint Trina, a sort of mystical deity associated with dreams. We've already seen one example of a dream world being associated with death through Fia in the deathbed dream. So to assume something like this could happen with Mikola as well wouldn't be a big stretch. And being in a spirit world could explain why Mikola has Torrent, since we know he is connected to the spirit world. So perhaps our goal in this dream world or spirit world would be to re-establish death and either purify the Erd Tree of the Death Root, or magnify the Death Root and kill the Erd Tree, and establish the Halig Tree as the primary arbiter of death. There's plenty of room there to also include the other aspects we talk about, such as the Eclipse and the Helfen. But either way, I think this shows us that the primary aspects of this DLC are going to revolve around Mikola, those who live in death, Godwin, and the Halig Tree. Anyways though guys, that's pretty much all my thoughts about this DLC image combined into one long ramble that I hope was at least a little bit coherent. As we know with From Software, the DLCs tend to be very unpredictable, so this could all end up being totally wrong. But even if that's the case, the speculation is a lot of fun, and I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to leave a like on it and subscribe if you're new around here, and with all that, I will catch you in the next one.